I remember being in art school, knowing I was an artist and yet not doing well the things they set before me, nor did I feel that sense of self-expression and desire that brought me there in the first place. It wouldn't be long before I decided that the traditional route of becoming an artist wasn't for me. I quit my big-ass job in San Francisco and art school and headed for the hills. When I arrived in the hills of Mendocino County, I was frustrated. I didn't seem to have the talent that others in my professed field were having. Granted, I was only 23 years old, but I knew there was something missing, but I didn't know what it was. I was striving for some kind of language, some way to talk about what it meant to create and to bring forth something that was inside of you. What I didn't know at the time is that that is what I was after, was to bring forth something that was inside of you. Over the next 25 years, I would work on discovering the language and a way of working to bring forth that which was within me, blending the idea of intuitive imagery, bringing forth in drawings and sound and paintings and pottery and jewelry, bringing it forth from the inside, my interior space, into this reality, into matter-based reality. I would spend time with my teacher, Sue Hoya Sellers, working in clay, working in wood, working in metal, working in pen and ink. And we would explore the ideas of how to bring a concept, an idea that didn't necessarily have a shape or a form, and bring it to whatever it was I was making. I'll never forget the day that she said, what is it that you care about seeing changed, healed, or transformed in the world? And in my heart, I knew that was ending violence against women and children. But I hadn't seen the bridge between art making and transformational healing. But that day, it became clear that when I made art with intention, not only was I changed, the creation was changed, and those that I was thinking about may also be impacted. You know how we say, I'm sending you my love? We didn't necessarily know when we said that, that actually at the level of biophotons, we could send love to someone and they would light up with that loving presence. And so that day as I was working and sending out my love to the women and children I cared about, that message went out. That was the beginning of bringing work that was inside out and sharing it with the world. Not long after that, people would begin to ask me to share what I was doing with their children and with elders and with communities in need and domestic violence. And I had to discover a way of working, meaning a way to share what it was that I was experiencing. I knew that when I was creating, I felt bliss. I felt connected to source. And it wasn't based on my skill because it was coming from within me. Therefore, there was nothing to compare it to. The tree that I was creating on the canvas wasn't being compared to the external tree. It was my tree within. And so as people began to ask me, I began to ask myself and ask my teacher, Sue, and my mom, Karen, how do I commit to sharing this information? How do I say it in language and in words what's actually happening. And it began a journey of discovering how to give language to what it means to bring something from an emotional, energetic state into a physical, visual state. How to make the invisible visible. The actual metaphysics of sacred art making would become my call. As time went on, I began to research what I witnessed happening in the people whose lives I was working with in creativity. I started to see changes that felt to me revolutionary. Keeping in mind the idea that creativity 
is not the same as talent. Talent is something that you're good at and you have skill at. Where creativity, you don't have to be good at it in order to e experience the benefits of it. You just have to do it to be self-expressed. And I began to take note and to research and to document what it would be to take on ideas like the critic and transform it with the muse. Take on the idea of the right brain, left brain, and how that actually works, how they work together to communicate. Take on language of just discussing how something comes from an unmanifest reality from my mind and heart out here into a creation and how that creation actually impacts whoever it is that's viewing it, touching it, or wearing it, or engaging with it. And so, in addition to being a painter and a teacher and a poet, I became a researcher, really, a seeker in search of what felt to me like a new kind of creativity. What I would discover, and it did take some time, was that the kind of creating that I was doing was something that was practiced in shamanic circles, in journey rituals, in healings, but mostly in other parts of the world. What I discovered was that all of our ancestors from every part of the world, whether that was carving a pin for one's hair or weaving a garment to wear on your body or sculpting an ancient image of the mother, Whatever it was, whether it was putting the stars and the moons on the ancient cave walls, every single one of our ancestors from every place in the world created with a kind of intention to tell a story. It wasn't about skill or selling it or even thinking someone else thinking it was amazing or even maybe their own thinking it's amazing. Instead, we created with intention to tell a story that generations and generations later would be an indication for those of us in the future to understand where we came from and the kind of mindfulness that our ancestors brought into whatever it was that they touched that exists to this day. That is intentional creativity. And while for me and those I work with, it seemed so new and does every time we do it, we understand that the origins are truly ancient. And so after a career of painting and having my own galleries, the call to work with others was ever stronger as I saw healings and what I might even call miracles begin to take place in the studio. People were able to alchemize and transform shame and trauma in a way that they hadn't been able to with other modalities. What was it about it that allowed it to move so quickly from being stuck and trapped in energy and body and moved? Part of it is that when things happen to us, they exist in story. And to try to talk ourselves out of those stories is really quite difficult, as you've likely noticed. But when you work with image, which is how story lives in image and language and sound, image allows the story to begin to change and actually begins to alter places within us that were trapped and stagnant. It also has the one who's doing the creating be at cause for their own transformation. This isn't about someone being an artist, a painter, or an illustrator. This is about self-expression as a basic and natural human right and giving access to all of us to create this. I feel like within all of us, there's a desire to be self-expressed, whatever form that takes. And many of us have mixed up talent with creativity. This is an invitation to step out of connecting talent and creativity and really just begin to look at self-expression. What is it that's calling from within you to be expressed? And are you willing to engage in a narrative transformation to work with the story that you're telling yourself, how you actually relate with your inner narrator and bring that out 
into a new potential dialogue. We've been talking to ourselves for so long. In fact, talking ourselves out of self-expression and vitality and originality. This is an invitation to come on in and then let yourself out. So if you have felt called to create whether that was you secretly always wanted to paint or to draw. You have reams of paper and empty journals. You may even have some canvases. You have a guitar, but you don't play it. You bought supplies to create necklaces, but didn't do it. You brought materials to knit or whatever it was. I'm Shiloh Sophia, and I think of myself primarily as an artist. But these days, I also think of myself as a curator of consciousness. In the work that we've been doing with thousands of women and men around the world, we've discovered something that we consider so valuable and worthy to share, which is an invitation to each person to summon their own hidden self, to become self-expressed, to find out what we haven't been able to see within ourselves, to bring language and form and light and animation to what has often been hidden inside. This isn't just for those who identify as artists and creatives. This is truly for all of us.